Okay, so it's getting set up now. Um, it's we're live. Um, so um, Gilbert, thank you for for joining. Really appreciate you joining my office hours. My pleasure. So um, let me talk a little bit about the agenda. So um, I'm going to first give you a chance to kind of introduce yourself, and then um, we're going to start talking about the topic of education in the age of COVID-19 and all the distance learning and social distancing and um, you know all of the um, all of the challenge that involves. And so, um, Gilbert, maybe um, I'll let you kind of kick it off here and just maybe kind of talk talk a little bit about your background as well as some of the things that, that you're doing on the board right now. Okay, um, my name is Gilbert Wong. I'm on the Foothill De Anza Community College uh, trustee. I'm calling here from Golden Gate uh, Park because I took my family um, out here and they're uh, walking around. So uh, just tagged in a half an hour in uh, Councilmember Tanaka's uh, uh, office hours. Um, I've been a city council member for nine years, uh, mayor twice for the city of Cupertino. I uh, also got elected onto the Foothill De Anza Community College trustee after I got uh, trumped out. And I am a community college uh, graduate myself at West Valley and um, really have a passion for um, education. Um, I happen to be up for a re-election uh, this November after serving uh, four years. What we have uh, accomplished, I think, over the last four years is um, number one, we passed the uh, College Promise Program. This is to give free um, college tuition for recent high school uh, graduates, including uh, books. And uh, second is that De Anza College went through a very rigorous uh, process and we were able to uh, appoint the chancellor's uh, appointment, which is Dr. Holmes. And he is our fourth president at De Anza College and our first African-American uh, president. And uh, lastly, um, I wanted to um, bring up that, um, uh, that even though we're a two-year community college, we are also allowed to give four-year uh, degrees. And Foothill College graduated its first cohort of 20 um, dental hygiene uh, students. Uh, so they got a four years bachelor's degree of science and we're very proud of those uh, achievements. Also, I served four years on the uh, Foothill De Anza Foundation, which fundraised monies for our students. Wow, that's a, a lot of public service. Thank you so much, uh, Gilbert, for your, your work and your service to the community. It's, it sounds, um, sounds incredible. Really appreciate it. Um, so, so Gilbert, um, you know, I feel like between like now and you know pre mid March, it's like a totally different world, right? Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Before, you know, we, we have more traditional classrooms, which we've had for hundreds of years. We, um, you know, we had the kind of the, the, the usual format of the instructor in front, teacher. I mean, the, the kids watching the instructor, right? Um, you know, but that's all changed now, right? Um, you know, you saw some of the latest from the state in terms of, you know, what's going to be possible in terms of distance learning or what must be done now in terms of distance learning. And um, so there's a lot of changes um, as a result in, in terms of education um, with, with uh, uh, the whole COVID-19. Do you want to talk a little bit about like, your thoughts about how COVID-19 has impacted education and what your thoughts about how um how like how do we cope and how do we make the best of of the situation definitely uh greg um so as you know on march 16th Santa Clara county has declared um uh, a COVID 19 uh, crisis here in the county and i believe that both foothill and deanza college was really set that on march 17th which was the last week of our winter quarter um that we were very uh easily pivot toward uh, distance learning. Uh, so they only had one week of distance learning and immediately went into uh, finals. Um, then we had a two week uh, break and immediately we started spring break with all distance learning. A lot of our classes at uh, Foothill and College has some kind of component of distance learning. So we were already ahead of the uh, game and we had a really seamless uh, transition. Um, we saw that other community colleges has uh, challenges, um, but we're really proud of our faculty and our administrators for doing the uh, trans transaction transition. Um, starting this fall, 
Um, we are going to be going to um, distance learning. Uh, we just wanted to be very upfront and make that early announcement that we're doing fall quarter uh, distance learning. And we will play by ear in 2021 with winter and spring if we can slowly go to hybrid. Um, obviously, some of our allied health courses require labs uh, in person, and we were able to graduate them last spring by having them come back this summer for lab classes. So we know how to uh, pivot, and also we know how to be flexible to make sure that they receive the quality education that they need at both Bahia and Dianza. That's great. You know, um, uh, if you look at some of the unemployment numbers, right, it's, it's just astounding. Right? We have unemployment levels similar to that of the Great Depression, right? It's just Right. You know, certainly, certainly most and most people's most people that are alive a lifetime, right? Um, and um, you know, I read reports of like, you know, double digit unemployment. I, I sort of even said twenty five percent unemployment here in California. Um, and so it's actually quite interesting that community colleges actually, I, you know, most people don't know that some community colleges actually have four year programs to to try to build up the skill set for people to be able to get a job in this really tough economy. Do you want to talk a little bit about kind of like how, you know, um, how, you know, Fidel Dianza is, is um, playing a part in trying to, um, uh, you know, increase people's skill set so that they can do well in, in a tough economy like we have right now? Definitely. Uh, yes, Greg. So the charter of the community college system is to be a two-year transition uh, school system uh, from uh, high school to the first two years of community college and then mm -hmm. transfer to a four-year university. Um, what we've been seeing is that there is a strong need for vocational uh, studies and some of these four-year uh, degrees are not being offered here in the state of California. Uh, for example, uh, dental hygiene at Foothill College, um, also uh, automobile uh, training or maybe um, mortuary uh, services. Uh, so maybe the nearest mortuary services for a four-year degree will not be offered uh, in a place like maybe in Texas. So we do have Cypress College in Southern California that was able to uh, offer four-year um, degrees, but these have been limited to 15 programs all over the state of uh, California as a trial period. Obviously, our friends in the University of California and the California State University systems are very concerned that we will be taking students away, but actually it's quite the opposite. All the programs that we offer, four-year degree programs that we offer at the uh, community colleges are not currently offered at UC and CSU, and we don't want to compete with them, but actually complement um, those two uh, systems to make it a win-win for everyone. Um, if they need to be transferred in other majors, definitely we want them to transfer to uh, UCs or CSUs, but there's some vocational service programs that does not make sense to be offered um, at uh, the four-year institutions and makes more sense to have them at community colleges where they can come in, come out, and most important, get them back in the workforce. That's great, yeah. I think. Um... You know the challenge is how do we get people back to work safely, right? I think that's a really tough thing. But let's let's talk a little bit about the cost. So, um, you know, the cost of education is astounding now, right? Especially for four-year degrees. And you know, a lot of people have been hit hard by the economy. I know my neighbors have told me that you know, and their doctor they took pay cuts, right? And a lot right. of people are taking pay cuts, and um, you know, a lot of people are having trouble paying their rent or their mortgage. Or, or their landlords and not, they're not getting, you know, paid rent, right? So it's, it's a really tough, rough economy. Um, so, you know, community colleges, you know, actually I also went to community college when I was, when I was in high school. I, I kind of finished oh. a lot of my AP classes early. So I, I went to community college and that was a really great benefit for me because my high school, you know, wasn't quite like Palo Palo Alto is like, uh, has amazing education. Right? But, but in, I, in my area, I didn't grow up in a very wealthy area. And so right. they didn't offer very advanced courses. So I finished all of the ones early in my, my high school. So I got, I benefited from uh, community college myself as well. And in fact, um, I mean, it was, I was thankful that it was so inexpensive to, to attend, right? Because my, my parents right. were very wealthy. And so it was really nice that, you know, the community, there was a community college available for me to, to continue my education. Um, so maybe can you, can you just talk a little bit about like, 
you know, in the, in the era where a lot of parents are, are really hit hard financially uh, by this COVID-19 situation, how, how is the, the, um, the, uh, um, the price difference between, let's say, a UC Berkeley and, you know, a Foothill? Like Foothill is also known as a very good community college. So what, what, right. how would you how would you compare the uh, compare and contrast the cost difference between the two from the point of view of a parent? So definitely, you know, tremendous uh, cost uh, difference between a community college, uh, California State University system, which would be like San Jose State, uh, Cal Poly, or uh, CSU uh, uh, down south, uh, San Francisco State, East Bay. Um, so if you go to a community college, number one, if you are going to um, pay either the parent or the student, you're talking about uh, less than $1,000 uh, per year. And with the College Promise Program, we'll also pay for the tuition and we'll pay for the books. So there's really no cost for a recent high school graduate. So right there, you're saving $1,000 a year. If you look at a California State University uh, system, you're looking at maybe... Uh, I would say uh, $8,000 to $9,000 uh, for books and uh, tuition. So uh, a little bit more uh, expense, but also quite uh, reasonable. But the advantage of going to community college is that the classes will be smaller size versus at the CSU, it will be a little bit bigger. Now, if you were to go to UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC Riverside, UC Merced, well, then you're looking at at least uh, double, which would be at least twenty two, twenty two thousand dollars uh, dollars and the um, professional studies is really good but it's very different going to a UC because UCs are more research orientated uh, very large um, classrooms and um, excellent education but you really have to be a uh, self-starter versus you have the intimate setting um, at uh, De Anza College or a community college so uh, definitely a lot of huge cost savings. So, um, Gilbert, you 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 have a very unique background because um, you've been mayor of Cupertino, a major city here in the in the South Bay, um, and you served for a long time on the city council. And so, I want to kind of ask you something that kind of blends both of your worlds, your current world as well as well as, well as your previous world, which is, um, you know, a lot of the schools, a lot of you know, education is a lot tougher now with COVID nineteen. And so, from your perspective, what are some things you think that um, cities could do to help schools, um, to help you know community colleges, um, students in general, to help you know make this tough time a lot easier. Like, what what do you think? What do you think as a city? Like, I'm looking for I'm looking for ideas. Let's say for here in Palo Alto, what can we do, for instance, that might might be good that might be good to help um, help um, students, learning teachers, um, to figure out. Like, you know, withhold all this distance learning and and social distancing and stuff that we have to do all the remote, all the Zoom calls, right? That, that right. people have to do. Um, like my my kids, my my like both my kids are saying, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna just do Zoom calls to learn now, right? And so right. and so, what what can cities do, right, in, in terms of really trying to help facilitate um, and support um, educational institutions uh, to be more successful? So I think that when I was on the Cupido City Council, one of the most important things that residents are asking, and same as Palo Alto, is to make sure that they have a really strong uh, signal, either through uh, fiber or uh, or in the future of 5G. Um, we really wanted to get either uh, uh, Google or at t to bring in the fiber. Because what I hear about a lot of complaints from uh, my two daughters, who's one in high school and one in college, and a lot of college college students, is that the equity, um, and from other parents and students, is the equity issue of making sure that all children has and students have access to uh, to the internet. And internet is not equal depending on if you can afford a faster speed. So a lot of folks are saying that you know it's great to have distance learning, but if you don't have the capacity or the bandwidth on your internet uh, connection or you're sharing your internet connection with your other siblings or your other family uh, members. So the most important is to bring fast, affordable uh, internet connections 
uh, 5G or uh, fiber into all the households. We know that it's all market driven, and we have found out that same thing in Palo Alto and Cupertino that not all neighborhoods will be getting uh, the fiber uh, service or the uh, capacity that we needed. And as elected officials, we need to send a strong message to these private companies of Comcast, AT&T, Verizon, etc., is to make sure that have programs to make sure that all students uh, in all families, no matter what your social economic background is, is to have a strong and good uh, connection. Also, another thing that I want to suggest during COVID-19 is that teachers are saying that um, they can tell that by looking at some of the families that some of them don't have uh, enough space in their homes mm -hmm. to allow them to have their own uh, bedroom. They might be sitting on a living room uh, carpet or something. Mm -hmm. And the environment is something that's really important and having uh, two parents working, or it really has to be a connection of the parents and the family uh, working together to make sure that they have that environment that is conducive in learning. Mm, okay, that's actually a really good point. Um, I've had a previous office hours um, recently on people trying to get, or residents here in our city, trying to get faster internet. So our city is you know, relatively old, and so we have kind of some older infrastructure. Like, so for me, for instance, I'm, I'm actually, it's really funny you should mention it, I'm actually trying to get faster internet for myself because I'm doing a lot of Zoom calls. And when I'm on right. a Zoom call, my wife's on the Zoom call, my kids are on a Zoom call. It's like you're dead. It's like we have to yell at each other, "Hey, get off YouTube!" or, or you know, "Get off exactly. your yeah," or "Get off your Zoom call." Right. So it's like when we're all zooming together, it's 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 it could be um it could be challenging, right? So yeah, I, I I and then you look at other cities like you look at Seoul, right, where they have um they have yeah. like super fast gigabit ethernet at really low prices right and then you look um, at some of the pricing we have and you think what's going on here right <laughs> didn't, crazy. Didn't, didn't, didn't internet start here right and um right. yeah so I, I think you're right i think having good strong market competition one, one of the things i i've seen like um like seoul and other uh other cities do is um is they do like open access um so basically trying to um, incentivize whoever um whoever kind of gets the first fiber link in to a house um they have to allow a wholesale like it's like a sonic right to right. be able to resell it to um to um resellers who provide the customer support and and you know other other bundled services um, and that that's created a kind of like a level of competition it's like in korea i'm not sure if you've been to korea or seoul but there they yeah so yeah so so they have blazing fat like gigabit ethernet for like 20 dollars like it's like it's just mind-bogglingly cheap right, right. But of course they have a lot more density, so it's it's not maybe not a fair comparison. But but this whole open access stuff really creates competition among the providers. And it, it also gives like in Palo Alto we have a dark fiber ring. And yes. so one of the things we could do is like say offer the dark fiber ring so that um so that um you get access to dark fiber ring um maybe at a discounted rate in in exchange that you have to offer your wholesale. You have to offer the access the last mile, you know, last mile access. At a wholesale price, right? So there's some sort of market competition going on. Um, because you're right. I think without the market competition, like that, that, like for me right now, there's only one provider, which is better than none. That can get the gig of Ethernet. But right. um, but then there's a waiting list because everyone everyone right now is trying to get faster internet because everyone's having the same issue, right? Everyone's like zooming from home, right? And uh, yeah. not enough, not enough, not enough bandwidth. So I think I think that's a really good point. Um, the second thing you, you mentioned, and, and I wanted to ask you a little, little bit more about that, is I've actually had a lot of people, you know, so I think the people with older kids or no kids at home, working from home is amazing, just great, right? <laughs> but, but but the um, the uh, parents who have like little kids at home, it's like a little crazy, you know. It's like yeah, they, they can't wait. To, they can't wait to get back to the office, you know, type of type of thing, right? And so you pick up a really good point about. Um, is there space for people to, um, is, there, is there space for people to, you know, allow their students to kind of study successfully, right? Because like, um, like for instance, I, I have um, some clients in Japan and, you know, like they don't like working from home because in Japan, all their houses are really teeny tiny small, right? Tiny. And, yeah. and so it's really hard to like, if, we're all, if all, they're all zooming from the same room, it's like really hard, right? Yeah. So, so um so it, it brings up a really interesting point about like 
um, you know, so there's, there's been a bit of a, um, from the state, and, and I'm, I'm just kind of tapping into your, your, your council um, background, your city council mm -hmm. background, but there's been, uh, um, from the state, trying to make it easier for people to build ADUs, right? And right. I've, I've had access, I shouldn't, I shouldn't use ADU, accessory dwelling units, basically you right. know, to add on to house or having a separate unit, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, you know, given your background kind of on city council and now your, your, your current role in, in education, what's your thoughts about like, you know, I, I've, I've had you know, several of my neighbors who asked me, hey, you know, like I'd love to kind of get a ADU so that, you know, um, because in Paul, our houses aren't very big. I mean, I think right. I think your houses are actually a little bit bigger than us in Paul. At least some of no, us. Yeah. So, so, so basically, um, there's been discussion about like, is there a way to have in a like some sort of EDU, you know, so that people can use it as a as, as a way to, you know, not have the kids jump on them as they are on the Zoom call, right? Type type of thing, right? What's what's your thoughts about that? And also trying to make it more cohesive studying environment, and then for that matter, even working environment, what's your thoughts about what, what could be done in that area? So I think uh, ADUs are definitely uh, the thing that's going now. As cities across the Bay Area are looking at their housing elements, we're getting pushed by the state of California to include more uh, housing in the suburban cities like Palo Alto and Cupertino. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, instead of going up, because that is the only way to do is to go up, is to look at ADU as an alternative to meet the uh, housing element uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. By having ADUs, you can put your kids in there, you can put your in-laws in there, you can put your husband or spouse in there. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's great opportunities that preserve our single family neighborhoods because that is what Palo Alto and Cupertinians cherish the most is our uh, our one uh, residential area, but also help the housing crisis by having uh, affordable housing. Um, I have a um, uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law who is um, who are uh, older, they're in their 80s, and, uh, and they uh, would like to have a place of their own. And I think ADUs are really great in that they're not in your house, but they're actually in a one bedroom or studio in your backyard. You can still, uh, uh, you know, keep an eye on them, but also they have uh, their space and they can tend to the backyard or come and have uh, watch the grandkids and everything. So it's a win-win uh, situation. And maybe by having another uh, account um, with the uh, ADU, you know, it will be less, uh, usage on that one line that's going into your personal house. Um, another idea that Greg I was thinking about is that we do have great corporations that work, that, that you know, call home to Palo Alto and Cupertino like Apple and Hewitt Packard and other companies that obviously has really huge fiber lines that are going into their company. And maybe we can negotiate with a public private partnership mm -hmm. and say, Hey Apple, hey HP, or XYZ Corp, uh, would you like to be a good neighbor and see how we can share some of your fiber lines uh, to the residents of uh, of these suburban cities that we live in? Uh, we got to learn, even with COVID nineteen, that people are uh, leaving the big cities and coming into suburbs like us. Mm -hmm. In that, how can we improve our quality of life? And I think that we just have to think outside the box and learn how to uh, pivot. Um, here I am in beautiful, you know, San Francisco Golden Gate Park, and you really don't need to have a large backyard. You can just walk to a beautiful public park uh, here. Uh, so, but we don't have these uh, amenities in suburbs, and I think that we just have to be more creative. Well, I, the reason why I was asking about ADUs is because I have a lot of my neighbors who's asking about ADUs because having a separate, I'm not sure you ever watched that video about that, um, uh, economist or something uh, who was talking on national TV, and then his his toddler walked in, you know, and then his his you know like a, a kid's kind of piled in. Like this is on national television, and the guy was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then you, I think you see his wife or someone like running in, like, yeah. <laughs> so so um, you know, I think enough people have had like embarrassing Zoom calls, right? And so 
right. so I think a lot of people have been thinking about ADUs as a way to also kind of keep the work, so you know, work or studies where it's a kind of as a separate space, right? From from um, from you know a house or a living room where someone might be working, right? So I know that's that's kind of like why there was a lot of interest in um, recently, especially around ADUs, just because it, it sometimes it's really chaotic and difficult to work from home or to study from home, right? Uh, when exactly. when there's just all this you know chaos around you, right? right. So um, so uh, Gilbert, I wanted to uh, we have only about three minutes left here, so I wanted okay. to give you a chance to I've asked you a bunch of different questions about you know the impact of COVID-19 on education and we talk about some of the challenges and some of the ideas um, that that can help right but is there anything I haven't asked you that you'd like to share that you know people here in Palo Alto might be interested in knowing um, that you know that can help us you know figure out the COVID-19 situation especially when I mean education very much as in Cupertino education here is it's one of the reasons why I moved here to the to Palo Alto, right. to the schools, and I'm, I'm sure the reason why probably you moved to Cupertino and why a lot of people gravitate to these cities is for the really great schools. But I don't know if you could, if you I don't know if you could just talk about you know based on your background as a as a mayor right of Cupertino as you know someone that's serving on the on the board um, education board you know what are what are some things I haven't asked you that you'd like to share that might be interesting or informative for the people listening. I think it's very important to um, to is that we all need to work together as the COVID-19 uh, crisis uh, has really made us think hard and, and see that we really have to look uh, out for each other as our uh, neighbors and our friends. And I think most important is that we as uh, local officials need to also think outside the box and look at resources that are within our city. Um, as you know that in Cupertino, we have uh, the Apple uh, Inc. and we always uh, lean on them to ask privately for uh, suggestions and help and they have been really um, great. And even Palo Alto in that not only you have uh, Hugh Packard, but you have one of the, uh, you know, at least the top 10 best universities, Stanford University um, in the background. And uh, with the hospital and the shopping center, um, they have been really great partners but also there has been challenges as well too. So my question to you, Greg, is that um, how would you deal with uh, Stanford University, their expansion, which I know is in the county, but also their effects on both the uh, school system and traffic, and uh, how would you, you know, in your row, uh, be an influencer, even though the county has the last say, but there's going to be a lot of, uh, unintended consequences that the city of Palo Alto would like to be uh, not compensated, but, you know, in partnership, get some community benefits from Stanford. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good question. You know, um, I don't know if you know, but like um, Stanford, right, they're not necessarily going to have everyone back on campus, right? And and if, um, you know, you, you look at it like a hotel, so we get a lot of money from the hotel tax mm -hmm. and our hotel you know, vacancy rates are just down at like 90 plus percent, right? We have, we can like one, less than one tenth the amount of, of hotel tax revenue that we got before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, a lot of the businesses here really relied on um, Stanford University um, employees and students, as well as other businesses um, for people to come in and do business here, right? So, so like a lot of the, a lot of the local businesses here have really been suffering. And Stanford itself is actually really interesting. They're one of the preeminent universities in the world. Um, they have one of the largest endowments I think in the world too, so they're, they're relatively well off compared to a lot of other universities. But the the, the really crazy thing is that I mean they've they've taken pay cuts, right? Um, Stanford Hospital they have taken pay cuts. I mean, which is really weird. With Stanford Hospital, you would think you know with COVID nineteen, if anyone they would they should not be affected. But it's, I think Stanford, even though I think it's a preeminent institution, has been pretty challenged by the whole COVID nineteen things. Um, you know, I I I, I um, I think that, um, you know, this COVID-19 has really kind of affected a lot of different people. And, um, and so I, I do hope that, you know, we're all able to weather through this because it's, it's right. going to be very challenging, um, very challenging times. So, um, Gilbert, I wanted to just thank you for taking time thank on you. your busy day. I know you're like, uh, as a public official, you're like super busy. Um, you're doing amazing work. So thank you so much for, uh, for joining and thank you for the, for your service to our community. I really appreciate it. 
And thank you, Greg, for having me here. And Foothill De Anza is really proud to represent the residents of uh, Palo Alto as the whole city of Palo Alto is inside the Foothill De Anza Community College District. And we really encourage uh, Polly and, um, and the other high school uh, gun to um, consider coming to Foothill College as an alternative uh, for your first two years, uh, then going straight to a four-year university during this COVID-19 crisis. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a steal, right? It's much better, bar much better deal. And also, I mean, I know like a lot of the poly and gun students, a lot of them are very advanced. I think some of them actually may, may actually, you know, take like do, do what I did in high school and take some community college courses. So that's a exactly. really good investment. Really welcome them. Thanks a lot, Greg. Thank you so much. Okay, have a great weekend. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.